Well, welcome everybody to another exciting, phenomenal, and impactful episode of Ignite Humanity Live. I'm JBO and your host and extraordinaire, bringing you all kinds of fun stories about ways that you can ignite humanity. And that is a big word, I agree. Igniting humanity, what does that mean? Well, we're all at a place in our lives every day in the world where we're thinking about our futures. We're thinking about what's possible. We're thinking about what it is and where we want to go and the things that we want to do. But we need to be thinking about them in a very geocentric way. That means everybody will benefit, everybody will move forward, and there's enough room and success and possibilities for all of us. And the show is all about ways that you can ignite your life, which ultimately means you will ignite others, which ultimately means you will ignite humanity. And it just starts with one person. One person can create a ripple effect that is going to touch the lives of millions. And you may not know that your ripple effect is touching millions, but if you make that effort, and if you're living your life with that as an idea and you want people to be ignited around you, it will indeed happen. And this show is all about ways for you to do that with wonderful guests that are doing that in their lives. Well, it's Wednesday, and so it's Inspiration Day. Each and every day we have a theme on our show, and today is all about inspiration. We're going to give you inspiring ways for you to step into igniting humanity and the way that we believe we are going to ignite humanity is through our heartfelt and honest, genuine stories. We all have a story, each and every one of us, a unique story, what I call an ignite moment, that moment that transformed you, that changed you, that awakened you, that inspired you. And from that very moment, you lived your life differently. You made different decisions. You went after different things. You repositioned yourself in a way that changed your life and for our guests and many of the people on our show, that meant that they stepped into igniting humanity. And it doesn't matter if it's a baseball league at home, if it's your local grocery store, if it's your town, if it's your city, if it's your county, if it's your country, each and every time you decide to do a little bit more for yourself in uplifting and raising your awareness and your consciousness, you then emulate it and make room for others to do the same. And folks, that is what is going to ignite humanity. And so we're talking about those ignite moments, those personal stories, those very precious moments that define and redefine people. And we have a beautiful guest joining us today. Super excited to have this gentleman join us. He is incredible, the CEO and founder of, or executive producer of Be Great, a very good friend of mine. I'm so honored to know him and follow him and see what he's doing and be a part of his movement. And it is just a joy to have him. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Mr. Brian Gallinger. Hi, JB. Welcome, welcome to Hi. the show. How are you today? I'm excellent. So happy to be here. We have a uh, beautiful sun shining in Los Angeles after a lot of well-needed rain. So it's beautiful to see the, the sun out and the birds are chirping. So it's just symbolic for being here today on your show and I appreciate it. Well, that means so much because I love that you like see the silver lining and that's very indicative of you. You instantly, the sun is shining and all is well. And so congratulations on that. You have this beautiful personality, this attitude, this this awareness of what's going on in your life and in the world. And it's sort of what I've learned about you has inspired you for your movement and your miss mission. And that really is about being great. Now, that's a big title for a lot of people. But can you tell us a little bit about for you what it means, the Be Great mission, the Be Great initiative? Sure. So Be Great is a, a social impact company that spotlights individuals, events, and organizations that are doing extraordinary things around the world. And we do that by highlighting people that are either advancing humanity or empowering the planet. And it's interesting how we came up with the, the company name. Uh, my best friend, Chance, he's got Be Great on his license plate. And for years on social media, he was very active and he would always put the hashtag Be Great. And so for years I was living in Asia uh, volunteering and rescuing children from sex trafficking in abusive situations and uh, helping rescue children that were missing and working on all these different scenarios that were very challenging and very dark. So I was exposed to a part of humanity that I didn't know existed and it was very dark, you know, third world country. I didn't know anybody there and I'm out here doing these things. And in the process, I kept turning to television 
looking for anything inspiring. So I'm in another country, you know, different language, different culture. And I just kept flipping through channels and it was news and war and drama and just a lot of negativity. And I was like, man, wouldn't it be great if there was a channel that I could go to and it's just this daily feed of all the good things that are happening in the world. And so I, I called Chance and I was like, when I get back to the U.S., we're starting a TV show, we're starting a company, and I want to just focus on the greatness in humanity. And uh, we toured around with different names and I finally got to meet up with him and he pulled up in his car and I was like, that's it. It's <laughs> simple. Like you don't have to create a cure for cancer. You don't have to raise a billion dollars for charities. You don't have to be a hero and, you know, do something extraordinary. You just have to be great at whatever it is that you do in your own way. It can be small or large. It can be once, it can be weekly, daily, you know, ongoing. It can be your career. It can be in your church. It can be whatever you want. Just choose to be great. And then by setting that example, it automatically inspires and empowers other people to do great things. And uh, it's, it's been a fun ride. Well, your organization is fantastic. And I love that it has an origin from you seeing a need and missing something and wanting something. And I'm a big proponent. I'm right there with you. There needs to be more positive content on TV. Hence why we are here because people yeah. need to hear inspiring stories and they need to know that if he can do it, I can do it. And they need to see that it just takes one idea that you can spark into another idea. Share with me a little bit about your story, because there are some people that are listening on the show right now and they're like, wow, I, I could never travel. I could never think that way. Oh, he's so lucky. Oh, wow. He's got it all together. But we all know that there's that origin, that ignite moment, that precipice, that spark. Is there something that you would love to share with us about how you got to that place and how you got to that kind of thinking? Sure. So, uh, you know, a lot of times people have their defining moments uh, or they have their ignite moments through hardship or tragedy or loss. And I am fortunate in that I had a really blessed upbringing and I have an, an extraordinary family. And so my ignite moment and what has inspired me to live a life focused on social impact is because of the blessings that I've had. So when I was a teenager, I learned for the first time that the father that had raised me since birth, my, my parents, was not my natural father. Mm. And I did not know this. And so it was a very eye-opening situation that I was exposed to and realized that who I thought was my natural father was not. And the person that raised me uh, married my mom nine months pregnant with me, widowed with two young teenagers, and then adopted me at birth. And he continued to raise my two brothers and I and his sons from his previous marriage like a rock star hero of a parent. Both my parents are extraordinary examples. I mean, like poster child, amazing examples of husband, wife, parents, grandparents. So when, when I grew up in this home of unconditional values and love and support, we were humble, middle class. We you know, didn't have a lot of opportunities or extravagance, but it was love, compassion, support, empowerment through and through. So when I started my career and embarking on finding Brian Gallinger and who and what I wanted to do in my life, I quickly knew that I wanted to do things that would give back because there are so many people that didn't have the opportunities and the, the upbringing that I did with that unconditional love and support. And then as soon as I started working in the reality of, of life and career and seeing hardships and uh, let down and, and things, I was like, you know what, Th this is really what I want to do. So my passion has always been entertainment and my uh, follow through and give back has been humanitarianism. So I've just been merging the two of them and having fun with that, doing anything and everything that we can. So I think my defining moment was 
I just knew that I early on wanted to give back and I wanted to follow that path. And anytime I've had continued blessings, whether that's success or prosperity or opportunity or whatever that is, I try to take at least a percentage of that and continue to do something that will help others in need and inspire and empower others to do similar things. I think it's really great because we all have moments where our cup is full enough that we can give to others. And you're really sharing that you recognized the the grace and the blessings and the gifts that you had been given. And instead of just like sitting back and taking it all for granted, you actually decided, consciously decided, and that's really a lot about what this show is, is conscious decisions that we make that you were going to use the gifts that you had been given. And there's two sides to every coin. There's lots of gifts and we do one thing and there's lots of gifts and we do another thing. And so you, though you consciously decided that you were going to step into humanitarianism and social consciousness and, and make it your mission to help others because a lot had been given to you. Now, I'm sure you've had some other Ignite moments along the way because all business owners do and anybody with a mission, there's a few hurdles to overcome. What kind of uh, inspiration, because today is all about inspiration, would you give to some people who are like, well, I want to make a social impact or I want to start an initiative and I just don't know how to get started? Yeah, so I get asked this question a lot. So I've, I've volunteered with different nonprofits and organizations. I've produced social impact and, and developed our own projects. And so I meet a lot of people that say, I want to do something. I want to volunteer. So recently we did stuff with the Los Angeles homeless community. Uh, we support a nonprofit called called the rescue that rescues children from sex trafficking and abuse. And we, we help all these different areas. And I always meet people that hear about it. And then they say, I want to get involved. I want to do something, but I just don't know how my advice to everyone is start small. The reason a lot of people want to do philanthropy or volunteering, but don't for years is because they think they have to start their own nonprofit, which is daunting. It's a lot of work. It takes time, money, and energy, and everybody's busy with their families and lives and careers. So I, early on, found organizations that were doing what I wanted to do, vetted them, made sure that they were credible and that they had good people behind it and they were executing what they promised, and then I added value by either donating money or time or energy or even resources. Like you said, the nonprofit that I've been working with for a long time is called to rescue. And when I met them, they didn't have a lot of marketing support. And that's an area, that's a gift of mine. That's a skill set. So find what they're doing and utilize whatever it is that you have. If you don't have time, but you have money, or if you don't have money, but you have time or you have a skill set, do one hour a week, one hour a month, whatever you can do. Start small, find your groove, add value, put gasoline on the fire, and then go and grow from there. Yeah, Worst it's, case, sorry. sorry it's a super good point because a lot of people are like, well, I don't have money, so how can I contribute? But the truth is you have so much equity in your skill set and in your resources and in your talents and your gifts. That in some ways is a lot more valuable to people than just giving them money because they need people who can do what you do. Great idea. Keep going. Yeah. And then worst case, what I tell people is if you can't find bandwidth for any of those, you don't have money, you don't have time, you, whatever. Everybody seems to somehow find time to flip through social media and like and comment and all that. So find organizations that you believe in, share it on your network. Whether you have five friends and family on Instagram or you've got five million followers, by sharing other content, you don't have to create it, you don't have to do it, you don't have to spend money, you just share. And that goes into your newsfeed. And if on a regular basis you're sharing this content, you are what's called creating awareness and you're promoting a cause. So that's a, a really good grassroots, simple way to start. What a great idea. I love that because you're right. People are always looking. And if you believe in something and you stand behind it and you feel that it's igniting humanity, absolutely share it. Share Ignite Humanity Live. Share about Be Great. Share about JVO and share about Brian Gallinger and share about yourself. Because if you want, you're right. If you're moving the needle forward on social consciousness and making people aware, do that's an easy place to start. And I'm sure 
when you're sharing, you're becoming more discerning, you're becoming more aware of, you're becoming more identifiable with what means and matters to you. And so a little bit more inspiration. I'm going to keep pulling from you. If people have decided, okay, I have a mission, I have an idea, this is a, a charity or this is an organization that I want to attach myself to, what would you recommend is the next step? Giving that time and effort that you have that's free to you? Yeah, if, you know, if a good way to get involved is with organizations that are already established, but a lot of people have an idea of their own. They're very passionate. They want to do something with children or homeless or veterans or whatever, the environment there are organizations out there that develop your concept. So in the business world, it's incubators. In the nonprofit sector, there are similar organizations that can help you learn all of the, the do's and the don'ts. You can save you time, money, and energy by helping you incorporate your 501c3 and determining do you need to be a foundation or a 501c3 or because there's a lot of different ways. There's B corporations. One thing I like to educate people on is oftentimes people think that they can't do social impact by being a for-profit business. And that's not true. There are wonderful for-profit organizations and they're just as needed as nonprofit organizations to create social impact solutions. So for example, solar companies are creating a solution for the environment with an alternative energy source. So it's a, social venture, but it's, it can be a for-profit business. So educate yourself and find those organizations that can help you, whether they fiscally sponsor you or they partner with you or they help raise money and awareness like Be Great does. There are tons of organizations out there to do that. And let me ask you, why sex trafficking for you? Why homeless? Why did you choose that? Because I believe that everybody has a story behind what it is they're passionate about why were those things important to you? So they're important to me because I did not choose them. They chose me. So I am a huge manifester. And I believe that by going out into the world, if we pray for or manifest or wish or write down or ask or say, whatever it is that you believe in or practice, when you put it out there to the universe, what it is that you're looking to do, it will be responded in in a direct manner, you will receive that. So uh, terrible grammar, I think just now. So. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so when I was in Asia, I was actually recovering and healing from the 2008 recession. I had lost a lot of money. I, my, I had to close companies. I had to let go of people. It was, I was in pain. I was hurting. And I wanted to do something great to give back to humanity as I was finding myself and kind of renaissancing where I wanted to go with my life. I went to a Bible study. I met a woman there. She was the guest speaker at the end, and she talked about this organization that was rescuing children. I cried. I was so moved, so inspired. And she said, is there anybody here that wants to get involved? And I said, I do. Turns out she's from Washington State. Her husband went to my rival high school. It was like this big, small town you know, we're in another country across the world. We met for a reason. And it's been almost 12 years now that I've been volunteering with them. So it wasn't because I knew a child. Or I didn't have someone, you know, that was hurt. I, nothing had happened close to me to connect that. It was right time, right place. I was asking for something to focus on. That was answered. We were connected. And now she's a best friend, a mentor. She's like a second mother. And that organization has added as much value to my life as I've added to theirs. So it's just being, being open to preparedness and opportunity meeting, and then being willing to act on that. Well, it's a great story for today. I'm talking about inspiration because you listened to her speech and you listened to her sharing and you were instantly inspired. And I have to say like, bravo to you because a lot of times we're asking for something. We want the universe to give to us. We're making prayers and wishes. And then yeah. it kind of shows up and we're like, oh, it, it doesn't look the way I thought it was supposed to look. Yeah. Or that isn't exact. I didn't think it was. And yet it's right there. And so bravo to you for taking the call and answering to the the what was presented in front of you and then following through. And I think a lot of people can recognize that there are probably times in their lives where something is literally right in front of them 
and they've been asking for it, but it's like they're looking in, they're, they're looking through it. So you've helping with that organization. You've created your own organization. You're doing lots of wonderful things in the world. Is there a way that you feel that anyone listening could glean from this, this conversation that you and I are having, how to take a moment, and, and you talked about the recession, many people can relate to that, many people can relate to how the recession is coming forward. How can you can take tough moments and turn them in like your pain into your purpose or your mess into your mission or those tough times into those triumphant times? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, I, uh, there was a chapter in my life where I was single so I tried online dating and in the online dating form, you could fill out all these different fields and they were like your hobbies and interests. And I put silver linings chaser and I got so many people messaging me like, what does that mean? And what that means to me is, you know, I said earlier, I've had a very blessed life and I haven't had a lot of, I didn't have major tragedy and obstacles that created my defining moments. I want to clarify I've had plenty of obstacles and life is full of ups and downs, no matter what I've had health uh, issues. You know, I've had um, tragedy, I've had loss, I've had all kinds of things, but I focus on and I choose to talk about the positives because that's what I believe in. And that's the trajectory they want to continue on. But when I do face adversity and I just did this last year, tremendous in multiple different areas, personal and professional, what I've taught myself and what I believe in is we have to look for, focus on, and find the silver linings. Because in every experience in life, tragedy, hardship, loss, overcoming, whatever it is, anything that's negative or hard, there's always amazing opportunities and there's always positive outcomes, even from the worst possible, possible scenarios, even in death. So I know people like Angela Rockwood, who is this extraordinary human being who had a thriving career, model and actress in a car accident, now a lifelong quadriplegic. And she went on to become one of the most inspirational, motivational speakers, models, and continuing actresses from a wheelchair. She started a TV show with a group of other women called, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on it right now. Oh my goodness. But Google her, Google the name, and you'll find it. Uh, it's it's she's extraordinary. Wow, um, Arias, who we awarded this year, and you met uh, another amazing amazing person that's overcome obstacles. So my point is, if you look for those silver linings, if you focus on those opportunities, the sooner you find them, the faster you will heal and recover from that obstacle. And the, the quicker those opportunities will identify themselves. So what's happened with me in the past is there was a situation where I was in the Philippines and my passport was confiscated. I had near-death experience, huge tragedy, worth a TV show or a movie someday. And man, I felt sorry for myself. I was depressed. I finally got home. I had to live in hiding. It's a huge, long story, true story. And when I got home, I had about a year of depression and rebuilding my whole life. And as soon as I was able to identify and realize that that had to happen in order for what was about to happen, Be Great wouldn't exist if that hadn't ha had happened. So if you can just change your mindset, and as soon as you're going through something, just every day write down and say, silver linings. What am I looking for? What is, po what's positive is going to come from this one door closes. So another door can open. If that door doesn't close, the other door can't. If you don't go through that painful divorce or breakup, you can't find the soulmate and love of your life. That's going to be the ideal mother to your parent, to your children. Like you have to have this mindset. You have to look for these things. You have to embrace it. You have to accept it. And then it's not that things are just easy and better. It just makes life smoother and it helps you understand that no matter what, you're going to have the ups and downs, right? Bravo. So well said. And I appreciate you sharing that because our Ignite moments always have a silver lining. They always have that golden nugget. It may take time. It may take years. You may have to look back in hindsight, but it really is very super powerful. 
Thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to put up on the thread where people can find you and get to know you and connect with you. And thank you so much because if you are interested in what Be Great is doing, please go to their website and find out a little bit more. I'm honored to be a Be Great recipient of the Humanitarian Award, the Ignite Humanitarian Award. I love my wonderful uh, award that I have on my dresser. I look at it all the time and it reminds me to be great. And what you said, be great in the little things, be great in getting up on time, be great in listening to my kids, be great in, in taking time with my family. And so every little bit of being great is absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Brian. Love having you. Thanks for joining us. You are an inspiration to each and every one of us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You got it. And as you can see, folks, this is so fascinating because when Brian first showed up on the show, he said, you know, I've had a good life and my parents have been great. And we all were listening and listening. But the truth is when he started talking about some of the hardships and some of the stuff that we all go through and some of the trials and the tribulations, we actually all leaned in a little bit more and we listened a little bit more because suddenly we felt like we could relate. We could feel the connection and our experiences overlaid with his experiences and what he was going through, we could identify with. And the truth is the human condition is powerful through trials and tribulations, through perseverance. When it comes to dedication, these are common denominators that we can all relate to within one another. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not about how much money you make. It's not about the title before or after your name. The truth is what really makes us feel connected is when we hear and listen to our authentic heartfelt stories. Because just like Brian said, he went through all of those things and it allowed him to wake up and realize how he could make an impact in just one life and in two lives, and in three lives, and in that mission, he's been able to help and ignite others. And I want to inspire you to do the same. So someone shows up in your life, and you're like, hmm, that's very interesting. Get involved. If they're doing something that's making an impact, see how you can support. If you're interested in you, and you feel called to follow that calling, listen to your intuition, and raise the vibration of what you're doing by surrounding yourself with other people who are doing the same. Now, if you've got an amazing story, please reach out to us and share because we would love to hear it. Send us an email at share ignite at ignite you dot life and tell us about what you're up to. And if it's not you, but you know somebody, somebody in your sphere, I'm going to ask Brian to send me the name of that lady, that model who is transcending her, her accident into something greater for her and have her on the show. So if you know somebody, Send us an email and tell us about them at share at igniteyou.life. Now, we are always live, but in case you miss one of our episodes, you can go and watch them absolutely free. We're not selling you anything. We are igniting humanity. And the way you can do that is go to ignitehumanity.life backslash watch and then click on the button in the middle of the page that says sign up. We want you to sign up and see all of our episodes with all of our guests and find out ways that you can inspire your life and step into your greatest version by igniting humanity. So just remember, when you ignite your life, you ignite the lives of others, and that ultimately will ignite humanity. Big blessings to you. I'm JBO and your host. So happy to be here, and may your life be filled with Ignite Moments. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.